and check what happens. Boom! Bliss! Hello everyone, welcome back, Dome here, and if you've ever wanted to have the drum machine programming workflow in Cubase, then my friend, you're at the right place, because on this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Beat Designer in Cubase, right after this. So I understand that many people want to have this kind of drum machine programming style in Cubase. They want to have this nice grid where they can start programming the drums very, very easily and in a kind of step kind of way, you know, like the 808, the 909. Well, Cubase has the right tool for this to do it super, super fast and very effortlessly. So let's say you have a cool drum kit and you want to start programming. In my case, I'm going to use the modern 80s drum kit. If you want to check it out, I'm going to have a link down below. And if you decide to grab a copy, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. But let's put this on the side right here. And now I'm going to start programming my drum kit using Beat Designer. So Beat Designer lives in the MIDI insert plugins, okay? So you have to select your instrument channel and then go to your MIDI inserts. If you don't see your MIDI inserts, right click here and make sure that your MIDI inserts are selected and they're visible. So now if I click here, I can just select B Designer and boom, there we go. Here's the B Designer and this is basically pretty much a step editor, drum machine style, very, very easy to use. So today I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks that you need to know about this plugin. It's very deep, but at the same time, it's very easy to use. The first thing you can do is select your elements. In my case, I have my bass drum. So if I click here, I can have a listen. Maybe I want to go for my snare. What about this side stick? Well, this side stick is not being used by modern 80s drum kit, so maybe I want to remove this, see? So I can remove an instrument lane like this, and I can also add an instrument lane. Let me show you. This is the hand clap, perfect. Another snare here, low tom, close hi-hats, another tom here. Let's go ahead and add some more elements. So there we go, and now I have this one here. I might wanna go for like a low middle tom, And I'm going to add another instrument lane and now I'm going to add, let's say, a crash symbol. There we go. So now let's say I want to work with these elements. Super, super simple. Now I can start adding my steps. So for example, kick drum. I want to have four to the floor. Maybe not. Let's see. Let's have a listen. Now in order to hear that, I can just hit play in Cubase. Great, maybe I want to make them all 127 velocity. Now, if you want to change the velocity, of course, you can just drag every one of these steps and you can make them louder or quieter, okay? If you click again, you remove the step altogether. So again, Perfect. Now maybe I want to add the snare. Maybe hi-hats. Okay, so how did I do this? This is something that I want to show you. So these are all little tricks that you can do right here in the B Designer. As you can see, let me just remove those and add them again. again if I add them, you will see that I'm adding them at the velocity that I said when I first click, okay? Very, very important. If I go right here at the very bottom, you will see that I'm going to get a lower velocity. If I start creating my notes here and click here on top, I'm going to get a much, much louder velocity. So it's very, very simple. Now, of course, I can change all these while I'm going like this, okay? So I can now click and drag, okay? Let me show you. Let's make them all very loud. And now, if I click on one of them, maybe here, okay, and start, maybe I want to have a velocity of 85. And if I don't release the mouse and I drag, then 
I can just affect all the nodes at the same time. So maybe I want to set a velocity of 78, 79. Super fast, right? Now, if you want to do it in a different way, you can press shift, hold it, and then you can just drag up and down and this will change the velocity of all the steps in this lane, okay? Very, very simple. Now, the cool thing about this is that if you have like, let's say, this kind of velocities here, you know, you have a little bit of variation there, this will also change all the velocity in relation to each other, okay? So it won't make them all the same. So very, very cool. Let's add some punch to this in there. Make it a little bit tighter as well. Cool. The other thing that you can do, obviously, is you can solo every lane or you can mute a lane if you don't want it to be playing. But now let's go ahead and start talking about some other things. Now, there are quite a few things that you can do here. It's really, really powerful what it can do, Bit Designer. So I'm going to try and take them one by one, okay? The first thing that you can do is, of course, you can go and change the number of steps for this pattern. For example, now I have 16 steps, but maybe you want to have a longer pattern like 32 steps. So I can go here and say, okay, I want to have 32 steps, or maybe I want to have more, I can have 64. It depends on what you want to do. But this is very, very important. You might want to have a longer loop, for example. That's very, very easy to do. Now, before I move on to this section right here, I want to show you what you can do with these guys right here. Now, these are super, super important because you can do a lot of cool things with them. In this case, uh, I might want to add a little bit of swing to my hi-hats, okay? A little bit of shuffle. So this is where you set your shuffle values. Now, as you can see, I can activate swing and this you do here with the swing settings, okay? We have setting number one and setting number two. And where do you determine what kind of swing you're going to have? right here. So swing number one, as you can see, has no swing. It's in the center, no swing. Swing number two, it has a bit of swing here, quite a bit actually. So now if I set this to swing number two, you will see that we're going to get some swing. And if I go to swing number one, maybe I want to make it like that. Or maybe I want to have like a little bit less swing on swing number one. So depending on which one you have selected, this is going to follow these settings here. You can also select none of them. Now, the other thing that you can do, let's say I want to deactivate the swing. You also have this very useful thing, which is the lane offset. Now, this allows you to offset the entire lane left and right. Why is this helpful? Let's say that you have a sample where the actual hit comes after the beginning of the sample, like this sample that I have right here, as you can see, yes, it begins here, but the actual landing node, the landing transient is this one. So in this case, the lane offset can be really handy because you can delay or make this come earlier, okay? So you can go like this, and then you can compensate for this beginning of the sample that it's early. So depending on how you want to place the sample and offset it, that's how you do it. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can create flams very easily. For example, if I want to create a flam on this hi-hat, for example, I can just go here at the very left bottom corner and start introducing flam values. So one flam, two or three notes of flaming. And these are determined right here. So this is the first note, this is the second note, and this is the third note. So depending on where you set these positions, this is when it's going to end up for the flaming. Let's have a listen. See that? Let's change that. And I also have the flam level here. So I can say, okay, you know what? I want it to be like that. Okay, so I want it to go like crescendo.
See that? Let's have two. Just one. So it's very easy to start creating flams and you can do this per note, which is really, really cool. Now, let me show you something else. Let's say I want to do this, okay? And now if I hit Alt and I click and drag, you will see that I can create a reverse pattern for these steps. So again, Alt, see, reverse, Alt, reverse, Alt, reverse, really, really fast. And if I hit shift, I can shift the notes like this, left and right, you know, drag your mouse cursor like this and it's dead simple. Now let's talk about the step resolution. Here's the step resolution. As you can see right now, I'm at 16th note. So every one of these steps is a 16th note. But this is really good if you want to start experimenting, okay? So let me add a clap here. And in this case, I'm going to change this to one eighth triplet and check how the groove changes. See, and you can experiment with different values and you can see how it sounds. You know, half time or maybe 16th triplets. Thirty seconds. You know, you can get crazy with it. If you go quarter notes, for example. Or maybe quarter note triplets. It's so, so cool. So sometimes I like creating patterns and then I like to, you know, go ahead and play a little bit with the step resolution because you might create a very nice variation for your song. Very, very cool. Now let's talk a little bit about copying and pasting patterns, right? Because right now we've just created one pattern. Let's say that I want to create a natural progression for this pattern. So what you need to know is that all these patterns end up in these sections here. We have four sub banks and each one of these sub banks, they have different patterns. Okay, so maybe the first sub bank has this pattern and maybe I want to copy it. Okay, let's copy this pattern and paste it right here. This is empty, so I'm going to paste this here. And now maybe I want to start creating some variation, for example. And then if I go here, no toms. Okay, so as you can tell, you have a lot of room and a lot of slots to play with. Then you have the second sub bank, you know, and so on and so forth. So many, many options. And then of course, if you populate all of these, you can just save it as a preset right here. As you can see, you can load presets, there are some presets there already, by the way, so give them a try. Or you can save your presets. As you can see, I have a DOM 80s groove right there. Now, the other things that we can do is we can shift the entire pattern left and right. So if I go shift left, I can shift it right. I can reverse the pattern if I want to. Again, really good for experimentation. So, if you have a really complex pattern, the reverse option might be very, very interesting. Now, let's see what else we can do, okay? Now, if I take this and place it right here, right now we still have to hit play in Cubase to be able to listen to those patterns. But what about if we want to commit to this and maybe just drop it inside our project? There are quite a few ways to do this, so let me show you now. Number one, you can drag and drop the pattern. So. The first pattern is on sub bank one and on this key. So I'm going to drag it and drop it and boom, it's now inside our Cubase project. The same goes for this one. If I take this one, drag and drop, boom. There we go. Very, very simple, very easy. Now, if you want to do this kind of manually, click here and say insert pattern at cursor and you do this, it does just 
that. Now, if I say insert subbank at cursor, you will see that it will give me all the different patterns that we have right here in this subbank, which is two actually right now. Another cool thing is you can, of course, insert pattern at left locator, but a very useful thing that you can do is you can set your left and right locators like this, let's say for 32 bars, and then you can say fill loop with pattern and check what happens. Boom! Bliss! Now I have populated this selection, this range, with this loop. So I can start creating my track like this. This can be like my main drum pattern that I'm going to use to start building my track and then I can do all the fields, all the variations later on. Very, very fast, very, very cool. Now, once you do this, very important, don't forget to turn off Beat Designer because now you have all the MIDI notes right there, okay? But before I finish, I want to show you something else. You can control Beat Designer using key switches. So you can activate this using the jump mode. If I activate this, you will see that now if I click these keys on my keyboard, okay, C1, D1, and so on, I can trigger different patterns. And then if I go up, higher up the octaves, I can select the other sub banks as well. So that's very, very easy because I can go here, start playing, and you will see that if I select the first pattern and then move to B1, then I'm going to trigger the other pattern. And this, of course, you can use a MIDI track to trigger these patterns. I usually don't do it this way. I usually like to create my patterns and then just drop them into the project so I can edit them afterwards and add more elements maybe and add some real time playing on top of these. But nevertheless, Beat Designer really, really gives you all the controls that you need in order to create drum parts using this kind of drum machine pattern editing workflow that so many people like and I get why they like it and I like it as well. I don't use it for every style of music but I think it's a beautiful way to work with drums especially when it has to do with like hip hop or 80s drums like synth wave that I want this kind of mechanical drum machine style and sometimes add a little bit of variation, a little bit of swing that sounds still like a drum machine. This is the best workflow in Cubase if you ask me and Beat Designer is really amazing for this sort of thing. So in the comments down below let me know do you use Beat Designer did you know about all these features that it has? And if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I hope you make some great grooves with Beat Designer. Don't forget to check out Modern 80s Drum Kit if you want to get these modern 80s drum sounds with all the sauces, all the reverbs, all the reverse sounds, and so on and so forth. The punch, you know, check out my video if you haven't watched that. Thank you so much, my friends. Groove on, I'll see you in the next one.